Welcome to tonight's celebratory concert, A Haven of New Music, to benefit Connecticut Summerfest's noteworthy ninth season. I'm Gala Flagello, co-founder and festival director. And I'm Aaron Price, co-founder and artistic director. For tonight's concert, our goal is to raise $2,500 to support our concert series this June. The concert is free. However, we suggest a donation of $20 or more, which you can contribute at ctsummerfest.org slash donate. This final fundraising push will help us ensure high quality video and audio production for our 2024 concert series, as well as professional multi-camera recording sessions for our festival composition students. With Connecticut Summerfest 2024 occurring in just two weeks, your donation during tonight's concert is crucial to our success. This season, we are celebrating fostering a transformative musical environment for our festival participants and audiences through meaningful creative collaboration. One of these collaborators is Haven Trio, who joined us as an ensemble in residence in 2022 and will be joining us again this summer. We continue to engage Haven Trio year after year because of their dedication to commissioning new music and their welcoming mentorship of student composers. Connecticut Summerfest is driven by this sense of community and spirit of collaboration. And that's why we are honored to have you as part of our musical family. As you are enjoying this evening's music and a look behind the scenes, please consider supporting this year's festival through a suggested donation of $20 or more. Joining us now from Haven Trio are soprano Lindsay Kesselman and clarinetist Kim Luevino. Welcome, Lindsay and Kim. Thanks so much. We're so happy to be here. Great to see your faces. Yes, thank you so much for joining us today. Can you please tell our viewers a little bit about what it's like to bring new music to life at Connecticut Summerfest? Oh my gosh, that's oh, the best thing ever. <laughs> the best thing ever. It is such a great program that you guys have built. And I, I just keep telling everybody how composer-centered it is. It is composer-friendly, you know? So, I mean, we we just really felt like what a great intimate um warm, welcoming space to get to know our three composers really deeply over time, you know, with enough time to play and experiment and get to know each other beyond just kind of the initial getting to know yous. And we just, we loved it so much. We're so excited to be coming back. I think it's like summer camp, right? Because it's like, you know, you had a summer camp and you don't know these people before and you're like, oh, and by the end of, by the end, you're like, <laughs> And it really did sort of feel like that, right? We just really loved our composers and then you get to eat lunch with them and you grab coffee together and, um, you know, they might not necessarily have written for the, this combination. So it, it's really fun to show what's possible and sort of hear what they had in mind. And then it's our job to help them figure out, okay, if that's coming across great and if it's not, why? And it's so gratifying to, it's like a partnership great good fun yeah and speaking of uh the first piece on our program tonight is by kento stratford he worked with in 2022 can you tell us a little bit about your experience working with them kento, oh, kento was so wonderful all of them were wonderful kento, kento was from toronto and so yeah. he and already had a little and plus he also had japanese heritage so they were like already bonded to start with right yeah, and he wrote us these really wonderful little um, kind of vignette pieces. They're almost like, they feel like folk songs. They feel like they've been around forever, but they also were kind of fresh and and just- Well, loved. he found the music, right? He, in somebody's attic, like they're called song from the attic, but he literally found the music in an attic and then he thought it would work well. And they're just, just different. It's, yeah, I don't even remember what the, they're like the text, right? Yeah, yeah. Each one of them is just like a whole mini world that you're dropped into. And they're funny and they're whimsical and they're heartfelt and kind of heartrending. Mm -hmm. They just kind of cover the whole spectrum. So we had a blast putting those together with him. There was one where it's um it's that he missed the train. J'avais manqué le train. And yeah. um, and there was a little ding ding ding. Like and so he and Midori, like he literally took he, he literally transcribed the door closure sounds from the Toronto subway. So that was fun. And then there's this moment in like a battle battleship and um, <laughs> you all understand, but there's bacon involved. So listen for the bacon involved. <laughs> Everything's successful when there's bacon involved. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that window in. And also, like you've been saying this whole time, we love that collaborative spirit of Haven Trio and your composers. We're so excited to have you back at our 2024 festival. Um, I'd also like to quickly remind our viewers that if you'd like to support ensembles and residents like Haven Trio at Connecticut Summerfest, be sure to head over to ctsummerfest.org slash donate and consider contributing tonight's suggested donation amount of $20. And now, without further ado, here is 2022 festival composer Kendo Stratford's piece for Haven, Songs from the Attic. <laughs>
Congratulations again, Kento, on a gorgeous piece. We are so excited to have Yvette Harriman Rodriguez on our 2024 composition faculty. Can you, Lindsay and Kim, tell us about your years-long collaborative relationship with Yvette and the music that you all have brought to life together? Oh, we'd love to do that. We love this composer. She is like, she's become like a soul sister for us. So one of the one of the things that we really believe in in Haven is commissioning people, not just individual pieces. And so when we dive into a relationship with a composer, we're hoping that it's going to last years and years and years and span lots of projects and many, many performances of their pieces over time. So we may not commission as many pieces, but we like to go deep with the with the people that we work with. And Yvette is a great example of that. She is um, just a fabulous composer and human. As soon as you meet her, you will love her. And she um, she wrote us this beautiful piece. And actually, when we were at Connecticut Summerfest the last time, we just had a draft of the very first movement. So we've come a long way since then. But I think you'll hear what the piece was like back then. And this summer, we'll perform the whole three movement work that she wrote for us. But I first met Yvette when, when she was a doctoral student at Michigan State University. And she was studying with friends of mine and colleagues and um, and I got to know her music through them. And the first time that I worked with her was at the Pittsburgh New Music Ensemble. And we commissioned a piece from her that was for soprano and cello and piano called Memorial that is just so rapturously beautiful and kind of one of those like direct through line to the heart pieces. And it just was clear immediately that this is the, the type of warm collaborative person that we love to work with. And so she seemed like an obvious fit for Haven. Um, and I don't know if Kim, you want to tell them about our piece with her and our process a little bit. Yeah, I mean, she wrote the piece. It's based on um, a poetry of the Cuban, the Cuban poet Marti. And the idea is what we had conversations because we, when we start, of course, text is really a critical component or lack of text. But if it's lack of text, then that needs to be intentional, right, as well. And so it's always this decision about text, and so. And so we were just, we just had a, I remember we had a phone call where we were just talking about stuff in general and Yvette is Cuban, but she's lived a long time in the United States, but we all resonated with the idea of like, you're from someplace, but you live somewhere else. And so therefore you're, you live now in this world between where you're not really like, she doesn't really consider herself Cuban anymore because she doesn't live there, but she doesn't really consider herself American. And so this, this world that lives between and so, um, so Marti's poetry really kind of uh, de dives into this, and and her writing is very lyrical. It's really beautiful. Lots of minor six that she that she uses, and then she uses um, ebos for the last movement, which for our listeners who don't know, but it's a basically it resonates on the string so that you get this resonance from the piano and it sort of sounds otherworldly. And the piece is De Otro Mundo, right? So from the other world. So, but if that's so warm, she's always sort of more concerned about everyone else than herself. Like even when we performed her piece, um, we were lucky to perform it on the opening concert of the Chamber Music America conference this year, because that's how we, that's how we got the piece is it was a, it was a commission from Chamber of Music America. And here she was like, she's the one that's like, she was way more worried about us and just making sure we feel good. And we're like, no, 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 but if it's your piece, like, like make sure we want to make sure we represent it accurately. She's like, oh no, are you feel like, she's just so gracious and warm and lovely. And I can't imagine what it would be like to be her student. You would probably just take a bath and kindness and generosity and you would just feel like you could do anything I'm imagining <laughs> yeah well we're excited to meet her we've been speaking of course a little bit ahead of the festival so as a reminder to our viewers if you'd like to support composition faculty such as Yvette and ensembles such as Haven Trio uh we'd like you to consider heading over to ctsummerfest.org slash donate and donating tonight's suggested donation of twenty dollars and now we have Yvette herself here to introduce her piece that Haven Trio performed on their 2022 Connecticut Summerfest Artist Residency Concert. Yvette, take it away. Hello, my name is Yvette Herriman Rodriguez, and I am the composer of Home is Minor Six, The Passing Seagull, which is a first movement of a song cycle 
written for soprano voice, clarinet, and piano. In this movement, um, you're going to hear a turn that is characteristic of Cuban music. Ba -da -da -da. And then um, another feature that I had in mind when I was writing the piece was the idea of interval of a minor six, which is very reminiscent of uh, my time in, in Cuba, my memories of studying uh, music when I was a kid in Cuba. Um, the, the text of the song comp comes from a poem by Jose Martí, uh, who is also or was a Cuban poet and thinker uh, from the 19th century. The poem is called Domingo Triste or Sad Sunday. And this song is based on the first stanza from the poem, which talks about uh, sadness and pain and seeing a seagull flying over the ocean on his um, going to Cuba. Jose Martí wrote this text when he was uh, in exile. And so the, there is this feeling permeating the entire movement and song cycle. Um, that is like being away from home. I hope you enjoy this uh, movement and I am also very honored to have been invited to the Connecticut Summer Fest this summer and I will be there along other faculty teaching composition. Um, thank you so much and best wishes. Bye bye.
Congratulations, Yvette. We can't wait to have you this summer. In addition to benefiting from Haven's expertise throughout the rehearsal and premiere process, 2022 festival composers also participated in Haven's workshop entitled Harnessing Vulnerability, Our Greatest Leadership Tool. Can you tell our viewers a little bit more about this talk and how it resonates with artists? Oh, sure. This is something we love talking about as, as long as people will let us talk about it. <laughs> um, we really feel like, you know, we're, we're a trio that specializes in new music and in commissioning and um, an easy fit for this festival. But we, we really believe that audiences will respond to all different kinds of music if they connect with us as humans. And so no matter the style, no matter the musical language, if we're making a personal, direct, intimate connection with the people who have come to watch us perform, then there's a much better chance that they'll connect to the music that we're performing. Um, we also really gravitate towards composers who are thinking about the audience and thinking about how their music will land emotionally on the people who are there to see it um, and hear it. And so we've we've kind of, I mean, we've been together now, you know, for about 12 years as a trio. And one of the things that we really feel like binds us together is this desire to bond with our audiences and help them feel like it really matters to us that they're there and that it wouldn't be the same without them. We're hoping that they can kind of come and be open and receive what we have to, to give them with a with a welcoming spirit and then leave thinking about their lives and transformed in their perspectives and and growing in their empathy. You know, we think music has a unique ability to do that for all of us. So that's what we were kind of talking to the composers and the fellows about last the last time we were there is how do you do that? How how can you open yourselves up as performers, as artists, as creators and really allow people in because we just think it gives the music the best chance of landing. Anything else you want to say about that, Kim? No, I think you said everything. But the point is, you know, in music and in composition, I think there's an expectation or, you know, when we grow up learning, there's such a binary thing, right, wrong, black, white, good, bad. You played it right, you didn't. You missed notes, you didn't. And so I feel like that puts a sort of shell on all of us, right? And so... I mean, to this day, and so, and even for audiences, they should feel this, or they should understand, or that they shouldn't do this. And so I think that's what we're trying to get at is there is none of that. Like, it doesn't mean anything. If you don't like it, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine to feel that way. If you want to cry, that's fine to do that way. If you, you know, like, however you bring yourself is, is okay. And so we, we're trying to have that grace with ourselves, like, like, our goal is not perfection. Our goal is not, that's not it. Our goal is communicating and connecting with humans. And um, I think that pretty much, pretty much is it. That's the yeah. gist. Thank you so much for those beautiful sentiments. And also I loved Lindsay, when you were talking about um, the word empathy and the fact that music has that power to help us all be better empathizers and to communicate more effectively or just in more intriguing or joyous ways. And that's part of the reason that we love having Haven Trio so much at Connecticut Summerfest is being able to communicate that to both our audiences and our composition students. Yeah, um, and just, that's the hope and anyway, up, right? <laughs> that, that is the hope. <laughs> the follow up on that too is that I think you guys, you both, Gala and Aaron, do such a great job of of leading through that spirit at Connecticut mm -hmm. Summerfest. And you make it easy for composers to be open and vulnerable with their performers and vice versa. It is a high trust environment, which is really special and, and not true everywhere. So thank you for doing that. Oh, thank you so much for that. We really appreciate it. And that is absolutely the goal. Um, as a quick reminder to our viewers right now, if you'd like to support our uh, bringing in ensembles like Haven Trio to Connecticut Summerfest every year, please be sure to head over to ctsummerfest.org slash donate. Um, and if you would like to, uh, please contribute the suggested donation amount of $20. Now we're super excited to share a piece by Connecticut Summerfest 2022 festival composer, Evan Fontaine, who collaborated with Haven Trio throughout the festival. Uh, Lindsay and Kim, can you share <laughs> a fun fact or story about what it was like collaborating with Evan on this piece, Owl? Evan 
wrote the poetry for this himself. So we got this piece and we're like, wow, I wonder where he got the text. And then we got there and he's like, oh, I just wrote it because I couldn't find anything that was exactly right. He just wrote a poem. And then he, and it, this Evans is probably the more gestural of things. Like it really evokes an owl and it, it's a really great story. Basically it's about staying up all night is basically the gist, but it's way more sophisticated than that. Um, but so I was just, and he, and he had just graduated like with his undergraduate. I don't even think he had graduated with his undergraduate degree yet. And he's writing, he's just a wise soul beyond his years. So that's my recollection of Evan, but also I, I just loved him. Yeah, he was wonderful. He that was such a courageous thing for him to do to just throw you talk about vulnerability, you know, writing the poetry and the music, but but also, I mean, that piece is so evocative and so colorful and full of texture. And we just we had a great time playing with him. I mean, he we spent a lot of time experimenting with sounds mm -hmm. and trying different ways of making different effects. And he could not have been more open or generous about that process. And I think we were able to kind of flex our creative interpretive muscles in a new way with him. And there's this awesome, very haunting moment where I have to sing really high into the piano. And it was definitely one of those like goosebumps on the skin moments for all of us when we just mm -hmm. all of the that's different like, instruments vibrating like... in the room. Yeah. So it was just think... really fun. It's a great collaboration. Evan knew he was, he was, I was impressed with Evan because I had a feeling like he had in his head exactly what he wanted, mm -hmm. but he wasn't, he needed our help to know how to get there. And so we would experiment and then, but we would sort of collectively have a moment of like, that's it, that's it, that's it, you know, and we kept, so that yeah, was really fun so because we were just trying to get, we were his muses in a way, you know? So that's fine. Thank you so much, uh, Kim and Lindsay. Without further ado, here's Owl by Evan Fonstein. Oh. <laughs> 
Congrats, Evan, and congratulations, Haven Trio, on yet another beautiful collaboration. Erin and I are so excited to have you back at the festival this season in June, and we're wondering if you can give us a little sneak preview of this year's programming and or collaborations. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. We can't wait to be there. We can't wait to eat the food. We can't wait to hang with the people. We can't wait to be back on campus. It's just going to be awesome. I wish it was tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Our program is is a really fun combo. We're bringing some some just um, some of our favorites, some of our closest collaborating composers. So we're going to do a subset of a piece that was written for us by David Biedenbender a couple of years ago that we just love to perform called "All the Things We Cannot Hold." Um, all we are and, given, we cannot hold. All we are given, we cannot hold. Oh my goodness, yes. All we are given, we cannot hold. And the full piece by Yvette Harriman Rodriguez, all three movements of De Otro Mundo, also will be collaborating with incredible, uh, another soul sister composer, Jilda Lyons, who will also be teaching at Connecticut Summer Fest this summer. Um, and with her, we're going to be improvising and we're going to be sort of letting people in on a window into our process because we're writing, we're collaborating on a brand new piece together. Um, and then we have some new collaborators, Kim. Gal is writing, Gal is writing us a piece and it's writing us a piece. <laughs> we're so excited. And these be, these are going to be whimsical and fun and lighthearted and a nice counterbalance to the deeply emotional music we often do. I'm super excited for this program. I can't even wait. Me too. Me too. Well, we're both very excited too. And uh, <laughs> speaking of programming, our final piece tonight is Sylvia Niemann's Spirits and Their Fruit, which she wrote for you at our 2022 festival. So you can tell us a little bit about your experience working with Sylvia. Okay. Can I let you in on a little secret? I don't even know that Lindsay knows this. I got this piece and I'm supposed to be a fruit fly in this in her piece. <laughs> at first I was terribly annoyed. I was like, man, they always want the clarinet and the, and there it's like lots of trills and stuff. And they were kind of awkward. And I was I was sort of peeved. And I must admit, I came into like I'm almost embarrassed because I love Sylvia and I love the piece now. But it it's actually a good I'm I'm being vulnerable. I'm telling you, like I really didn't like this piece originally, and I was kind of grumping through it, and I was practicing it, and it's like, and she wants me to be a fruit fly, and these things just don't lay well on the clarinet. What the heck, you know, in my mind. And then I got there, and Sylvia is delightful. And again, it's just the power of of being of live music and working with composers because, like, of course, I of course I knew this, but I didn't. She had never done this before, so she needed help too. So it was. All I had to do was, you know, anyways, to surprise it to say, imagine, imagine that we unlocked everything and then it just became really a lot more fun in, um, in understanding her intent and what she was after than we were able to fix things up and make it go a lot better. So then I loved it by the end. And that's that like, like true confession. I still feel like when I think back on that piece or I listen back to the recording, it's like a joy crescendo. It, exactly. It starts exactly. with the potential energy joy that's just kind of bubbling under the surface and it just blossoms over the course of the piece. So by the end, I mean, we were just like giggling and laughing and and couldn't, couldn't take the smiles off our face because it was that much fun to put together. So she really unlocked something in all of us with this piece. Mm -hmm. 
So glad to hear it. And I have to say, as another little behind the scenes, it was such a joy being in those rehearsals and seeing you all work together on that piece, because I could tell you were trying to figure out that joy crescendo through the workshopping process and getting to see that uh -huh. unfold and then present that at our evening of premieres to our audience was super, super exciting. So uh -huh. really excited to be bringing this piece out tonight for everybody watching to see. Thank you so much again, Lindsay and Kim for being here. And without further ado, here is our final piece of the evening, Sylvia Niemann's Spirits and Their Fruit.
Congratulations, Sylvia and Haven Trio. We're so excited that over the past eight seasons of Connecticut Summerfest, we've premiered over 71 new pieces, presented 17 chamber music ensembles, engaged 22 composition faculty. In 2023, we garnered over 800 concert series viewers between in-person and online audiences, which, with your support, will continue to grow this season. If you loved what you heard tonight, we hope you'll consider making a donation to our noteworthy ninth season. Tonight's fundraising concert is our final chance to ensure funding for our high quality video and audio production for our 2024 concert series in just a couple of weeks. Your donation tonight will also support professional, high quality multi-camera recording sessions for our festival composition students. With Connecticut Summerfest 2024 beginning on June 6th, your donation now is crucial to this season's success. As a reminder, if you'd like to support ensembles and residents like Haven Trio at Connecticut Summerfest, be sure to head over to ctsummerfest.org slash donate and consider contributing tonight's suggested donation of $20. We hope to see you this June for our summer concert series. Friday, June 7th at 8 p.m., Noise. Saturday, June 8th at 8 p.m., Haven Trio. Sunday, June 9th at 3 p.m., Black Moon Trio, and Tuesday, June 11th at 8 p.m., our evening of premieres concert. All concert times are listed in Eastern Daylight Time and will take place at Berkman Recital Hall at the University of Hartford, the Hart School. If you'd like to learn more about our noteworthy ninth season, please visit ctsummerfest.org. Thanks again for all of your support, and we can't wait to see you again this June.